So blend modes certainly have a number of different uses in Photoshop, but in here I just want to show you how you can use blend modes to uh, really enhance textures or even create entirely new textures by simply blending them using blend modes and other blending features here in Photoshop. So I have here a image of a texture. It's just a very basic texture that I've got set as a background layer. And I've got a number of different other um, texture files we're going to use in this. And the first one is this rust texture I have here. And what I want to do is drag and drop it over so it's laying on top of this existing uh, texture in this file here. However, I only want the texture that I'm looking at. I don't necessarily need the color information of all this uh, this rust and the you know the, the light blue and the, the red and everything like that. I don't need that color. I just want the texture. So we're going to go under the image menu first and go under adjustments and choose desaturate. Now I don't mind using desaturate when it's a texture like this where whereas if I were going to be converting a photograph of a person perhaps into black and white, then I would uh, use a, a different method, of course. But since it's a texture, it's okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and take that texture and drag and drop it over. And just to make sure it falls in the middle of my document, I'm just going to hold down the Shift key as I drag and drop it over. And there it goes, it lands in there. Now, over in this image, we'll make sure it's on top of the background texture. And then all I'm going to do is change this layer's blend mode from normal Two, let's, uh, let's go with hard light on this one. And you'll notice the texture already looks uh, drastically different than it did before. By merely blending that one texture on top of another, we're getting something completely different altogether. So let's do the same thing once again. Here I've got another texture, and this is a wood texture, kind of a bare scraped wood uh, texture that I found. And we're going to do the same thing on this image as well. We're going to go under Image uh, Adjustments and choose Desaturate. And then let's go ahead and drag and drop it over to this to the working layout here. And let's try a different blend mode on this one. Now, I uh, already, uh, of course, already know which blend modes I'm going to use on these. But if you did not, and you were in fact uh, in experimenting with an image, and you didn't weren't sure what blend mode you wanted to use, you can remember that you can hold down your shift key and then hit the plus sign or minus if you want to go backwards on the list, but it will toggle you down the list of blend modes so you can see exactly what you're getting on each and every blend mode. And you can again use that minus key to go back up and see which blend mode may work the best. Now in this case, I know that I'm going to like soft light in this case, but again, if you did not know which exactly what blend mode you're going to be working with, then you can certainly uh, toggle through and see which one works. So I've got two textures now blending through each other onto this uh, background texture and we're already getting an entirely different look altogether just using the blend modes. Now I have a third texture here that I want to add to this image and I am going to go ahead and take out the color. Let's go again, go to, to desaturate and I'm going to go ahead and take this and drag and drop it over. Now I'm not going to use a blend mode on this particular image because I'm going to show you another method for blending images um, that oftentimes uh, if you find that a blend mode doesn't quite blend it the way you'd like it to then this is another option you can explore to uh, blend one, wear with, well, one layer with another. So I'm going to have that layer selected and the layer style menu here at the very top we've got an item called blending options. So we'll go ahead and open that up and down here at the bottom we have the blend ifs sliders. Now these allow you to determine which areas light or dark of an image will actually show through or if um, any darker or lighter areas of the underlying layers will show through as well. Now in this case we're going to go ahead and start with the black slider on this layer and if you just take that black slider and push it in inward a little bit you'll see that the darker areas really just disappear allowing the other image to um, the images underneath to bleed through. Now depending on the, the type of image this transition can seem somewhat abrupt and very rough edges. But you'll also notice that the sliders themselves are split. So if you hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt on Windows, you can actually split the slider and smooth that transition in between those two sliders. So there you can see that image is blending a little bit too. You can also go down here and blend, have some of the underlying layer blend through a little bit. But there is no real formula for what works or does not work um, on this image. It's um, really just a matter of going in there and moving the sliders around and seeing what works and what doesn't. So I think that works pretty good 
and I'll go ahead and click OK. Now remember, when you're using the blend if sliders, there is no indicator on the layer that that change has been made. It's uh, merely just, uh, it, it, it remembers the change, of course, but it just doesn't indicate it on the layer anywhere. So while it looks, you look at the layer and you think, oh, well, that area has been deleted. Even if I move it around, it looks like it's transparent. It is technically not transparent. It is merely interpreting it as such because of the blend if uh, slider. So just remember that um, you've got a blend if correction on this. In fact, one thing I like to do when I do a blend if slider and, uh, is to go ahead and change the color of the layer. And that will tell me that I've done something to that layer. In this case, I have adjusted it with the blend if sliders. So moving on, let's uh, let's go add one last image here. We got our subject image, which is this uh, guy on this this on the cool ATV here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it and drag and drop it over as well. And with this image, I am gonna go ahead and change its blend mode. This time, I'm gonna change it from normal to linear light. Now, what that's gonna do is it really punches out the color and the saturation of that, that photograph. But we're gonna take it even a step further by not just adjusting the blend mode, but also adjusting the blend if sliders again as well. So we'll go ahead and just push these uh, sliders around. I am again holding down the option key on Mac, Alt on Windows to split the slider and just smooth that transition so it really blends in with that texture really well. So we're allowing um, highlighted and dark areas of the image to come through and that helps that texture really kind of punch through, so it really kind of gives a, an aged look to that photo. Now, those changes are made. I, I've got a bit, of, still got a bit of a harsh edge on my ATV guy here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a layer mask on that layer. And let's go ahead and grab the gradient tool. Up here in the options bar, we're making sure we're using the foreground to transparent gradient. And we're gonna make it a radial gradient. And then I'm just going to add random radial gradients around the edges to just kind of fade out certain areas like there's a little bit of a burn effect going on here at the bottom we'll leave that we'll just get some of these corners just so I'm really kind of getting rid of those harsh edges so it really looks like the image is blending in quite nicely that looks pretty good so we're looking good all right now I've got two text items here just to kind of give it a finished look and you'll notice that I've done the same thing to these um, text objects that I've done to the other layers. In fact, let's go in here. We can see on the ATV lettering up here up top, you can see that I've gone ahead and adjusted the underlying layer. I've gone ahead and split that slider. It's allowing some of the darker area of the underlying texture to really kind of bleed through and really give it that kind of grungy look to it. And, uh, same thing down here for the off-road. I've done the exact same thing, just merely opened up the black slider in between and it's allowing those darker areas to kind of bleed through. Now to just finish it off, I'm gonna add a layer mask on both of these text layers and mask out certain areas, pretty much where, where the ATV is. I wanna uh, kind of have him a little bit more visible there. So let's kind of fade that area there. We don't wanna lose the readability of our text, of course. So I'm just gonna fade it out a little bit there at the bottom. And up here on the ATV, I wanna see his head a little bit more. So I'll just kind of fade it out there. And that looks really good. So ultimately what we've got here is very nice texture-based object created from several different texture files. Notice here in the layers panel, we started with that base texture. We built texture upon texture and blending it using blend modes and the blend if sliders. That's the key thing here is not to forget those blend if sliders. They can become really, really handy when you want to blend an image and that... Um, the blend mode doesn't quite give you what you want. You can try the blend if sliders and take it an extra step further to get something really cool.